Google is one of the largest search engines in the world. Billions of people search on it every day to look for answers. You have an idea for a blog post that you know your audience will love. So how do you get Google to show it to them? How do you get your blog post to rank on Google? It's not a mystery. It's actually quite easy. The process just takes time. So if you want to drive traffic to your blog through Google or any search engine for that matter, here is how to write a blog post that ranks on Google. You can also think of this post as a beginner's guide to SEO. Hi there, I'm Joja LaBeouf and I help women grow their blogs and work from home at travelingpetitgirl.com. So let's get started. So first of all, why would you want to rank on Google? For one thing, when you rank on Google, you get traffic to your blog. And when you get traffic, you get more followers. And when you have more followers, you can pretty much do anything you want with it. You can grow your own community in your Facebook group, grow your email list, monetize it, whatever you want. And the traffic you get from Google is the type that will sustain your blog, meaning you will continuously get traffic for years and years, no matter how old your blog post is. So you continuously get traffic as long as people are searching for your content and as long as your content solves a problem. An example of unsustainable traffic is traffic through Facebook and Instagram. And by unsustainable, it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means the traffic you get from there will probably only last for a few days. Once you put a post on Facebook or Instagram promoting your blog post, people will see it for a couple days and then that post will be buried by the thousands of other social media posts that get posted after it. And these social media posts aren't searchable and they don't have the capability of search like search engines like Google. That said, you should still share your posts on these channels. Second, how do you rank on Google? You rank on Google by optimizing your posts for SEO. And SEO means search engine optimization, which is a process to optimize your website to make it easy to find through search engines. And when I talk about an SEO friendly blog post, which is what you'll learn how to write at the end of this video, it's a blog post that you optimize to make it easy to find on search engines. Or if you want to think about it differently, it's a blog post that speaks the same language as search engines. So how do you make your blog post speak the same language as search engines so that you can rank on Google? The first step is keyword research. And it might sound a little bit too techy, especially if you're a beginner and just getting into this whole world of blogging. It's a very important step that you really can't skip. So once you have your blog post idea down, you wanna type in the topic of your blog post into ubersuggest.com and this is a keyword research tool. For example, you can write a post about how to lose weight with intermittent fasting. So you can just go ahead and type intermittent fasting in the search bar and make sure it has at least 1,000 searches per month. That way you know there is already a demand of people searching for your topic. If there isn't, you might want to think of another blog post idea. After that, you'll see a whole list of related keywords that people use to search for content related to your topic. So make sure to write these down. You can even use these keywords as a main point in your blog post since you already know people are searching for it. So now that you have your list of keywords, you want to make sure to include these keywords into the title of your blog posts, your introduction and concluding paragraphs, as well as the main points and the body of your blog posts. The next step is to come up with an SEO friendly title. So make sure you use simple words so that your blog can speak the same language as search engines. So don't use any slang words or any fancy flowery words and make sure to include at least two to three keywords into your title. Next, as you write your blog post, you want to use an organized writing structure. So first you have your title and then you have your introductory paragraph, then you have your first main point and then a supporting paragraph to expand on that main point and then your second main point and then another supporting paragraph to expand on that second main point and then as many main points and supporting paragraphs as you need to explain your topic and then you'll have your concluding paragraph and in your concluding paragraph this will wrap up everything you said in your blog post you can also make it a recap too listing all your main points in one easy to read list and then of course include a call to action this isn't for seo but this is just to turn your traffic into your followers. For example, a call to action can be if you need support on intermittent fasting, go ahead and join my Facebook group where other people there are also sharing their journey on intermittent fasting. So in your entire writing structure, you want to make sure you have already included keywords into the paragraphs and into the main points. Next up, after you've written your blog post, you want to format your text. So automatically, the title of your blog post will be headline one or H1. So you'll want to make your main point smaller than your title, so H2. Your introductory, supporting, and concluding paragraphs can be a normal or paragraph format. But within these paragraphs, you'll want to bold the main sentences. And plus points if there are keywords in those sentences. 
So formatting your text not only helps Google to read your blog post, but it also helps improve the reader experience. Some people get really turned off from reading large blocks of text. So you want to break down your content into headlines and bold the main sentences so that it's easier for them to read your content. Next up is to use a keyword rich URL. So whatever the title of your blog post is, make sure that your URL also matches it. It can also be a shorter version of your title in case your title is too long. What you don't want your URL to look like is travelandpeticgirl.com slash 2020 slash 02 slash 5 slash 10581. That's not what you want. <laughs> Now, if you have any images in your posts, which is also a way to break up large text, you want to make sure you have SEO friendly images. So to do this, you file name each image with descriptive keywords. For example, intermittent fasting before and after .jpg instead of photo-1.jpg. This is so that your photos are also searchable on visual search engines like Google Images and Pinterest. And if you're a WordPress user, you want to make sure that in the alternative text, you include a description of your image too. So when you upload photos into your website, make sure they are less than one megabyte so that they load fast. Nothing is really more annoying than a slow loading website. Even waiting a second or half second more can cause someone to just exit your website entirely. So make sure to resize your photos first. Usually a a good max length is 1,500 pixels. Next up, if you have a self-hosted WordPress, make sure to download the Yoast SEO plugin because you'll want to edit the meta description of your blog post. So a meta description is a one to two sentence snippet that shows up right below the title of your blog post when people see it on Google. So if your introduction is long or your keywords don't show up within the first one to two sentences of your blog post, you can edit your meta description with one to two sentences describing what your blog post is about. And of course, you will use your keywords here too. And the great thing about the Yoast SEO plugin is that it'll show you a preview and let you know if the meta description is too long or too short. It'll also tell you if your title is too long or too short too. It has a lot of amazing uses to make your website SEO friendly. So I highly recommend that plugin if you use WordPress. The next step is to interlink your blog content. So if you touched over a topic that you go a lot more in depth in another blog post that you wrote, make sure to link that in your post so that your visitors can read it too. If they're already getting so much value in your blog post, they are more likely to check out your other content that's in a related topic too. And this increases your page views and getting subscribers. And this is why I highly recommend blogging about one niche. If you haven't chosen a niche for your blog, go ahead and check out my video over here. It's the ultimate guide on how to choose a niche and honestly, the very first step into growing your following. So after you've revised your blog post and it's ready to be published, don't expect Google to immediately drive traffic to your blog post. It will take three months for your blog post to continuously get traffic. And I know it sounds long, but this is a type of traffic that will sustain your blog. So let's say you're at the end of three months and you're still not getting traffic. What do you do next? Do an audit, assess those blog posts that you wrote and really be honest with yourself when you answer these questions. Was the blog post valuable? Was there a takeaway in the title? If it doesn't solve a problem or speak to the desires of your audience, you're not gonna be searching for it. Is your blog post a story? Story posts don't perform well if you don't already have an audience. If these people don't know you, why would they want to read your story? Story posts are also not SEO friendly, but you can rewrite your story in the form of a how-to guide or a step-by-step -step guide. Another thing to look at is the design of your website. So does it provide a good or bad reader experience? Cause that could also be a deal breaker too. My next tip for you is not to stuff your blog post with keywords. Google will rank you lower if you do this. So you wanna make sure your blog post still reads as if you're talking to your readers. And you're not a robot saying intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting benefits, intermittent fasting, lose weight, intermittent fasting, weight loss. And if you are using a free website builder or a free blogging platform like blogspot.com, Blogger, Wix, Squarespace, and WordPress.com, the SEO strategies I taught you will help, but know that there are SEO limitations with getting your blog to rank, especially if you're competing against other blogs that are self-hosted, meaning they have their own domain. So if we have travelingpatikro.com versus travelingpatikro.wix.com, if I have the exact same blog post, this one will perform much better and rank on Google. And with self-hosted WordPress blogs, you can download plugins like Yoast SEO, which will make it easier for your blog to rank on Google. You can also download plugins to make your website load faster too. All right, so that is how to write a blog post that ranks on Google. And I hope you like this beginner's guide to SEO. Please let me know in the comments what your biggest takeaway was. And if you need support on starting your blog, I have a checklist that you can refer to on everything you need to do to get your blog started. It's called the Bold Blogger Launch Checklist. And if you need some help writing a blog post, there's a section over there that will help you unfold your blog post step by step. 
You can download it for free at travelingpetitgirl.com slash bblc. And come and join my free Facebook group, The Bold Blogger Mastermind, where we have all sorts of conversations about blogging. I also offer feedback every Friday if you need some help on your blog post, your blog post design, your logo, your Instagram profile, anything like that. And you can join it at facebook.com slash group slash bold blogger mastermind. So thank you for watching. Please like this video if you learned something and subscribe for future videos. I'm Jojo LaBeouf and I help women grow their blogs and work from home at trawlingpetitgirl.com. Stay safe. Bye.